It is Easter weekend in the sugar bush. Kind of uh, had a late start this year because of the weather and probably an early finish. I think it's going to be short, but uh, Dominion and Graham. I'm going to fire this evaporator up again. Had it running last night and got some syrup starting. Pretty sweet. Sap. Cool. Just go over to my kindling pile here. Um. We got enough to get it started and then um, we'll carry some more firewood over there in a minute from that pile. There's some good split stuff. Yeah. How's that, Dad? Okay. That one's enough, eh? Well, we're gonna have supper soon. You wanna help Jeremy with the So this model's got the cook front on it, so I'm going to get a pot of cast iron chili rocking. There's my gravity tank with my level hose, so I know much how much water's in here. We'll open that up. Uh, and it's almost full. So when the level comes down a bit, I'm going to use this 12 volt pump here to pump my filtered sap out of the big storage tank up into the gravity tank. So from the gravity tank, feeds through the hose into the float box. So the float box maintains the level of sap in the sap pans. And then there's a transfer box at the back that allows your concentrated sap in to the syrup pans and then Use the temperature gauge to tell when it's done, and you pour it out on the hose. We're going to focus on this cooktop here though, because I have cast iron, some chili mix, some ground beef, some tomato sauce, some other tomato business, kidney beans, champignon, your mushrooms, and some beef broth. Through a little bit of fried onion in there and some butter and we'll just get it warmed up so that we can brown the chili the trick here this is a really good cook surface my pots slightly too big to sit flat on there um, oh I just got it into place there we go Get that butter melted. Get that browning. So the main holdup right now is just that I have to boil to catch up to the amount of sap that I have because every bucket, every barrel is all full of sap. So if I can um, boil it down, then I can make some more space and then go collect the buckets and bring all that sap over here to the to the sugar camp. What's our what's our drip rate? One, two. Well, that's not bad. My sister just emptied this, and there's some dripping. Yeah. So part of the fun up here is. Um, and, and the interesting part, besides topping trees and collecting sap, is just the forest management. 
there's there's a whole system for how you space your trees and select out your healthy trees and your unhealthy trees there's one that needs to be collected we don't need that bark in there this tree you can see I topped it last year this is the 7 16 tops they leave a big hole um, these blue ones are 5 16 they're like half the size so the 5 16 leave a smaller hole so it heals up a lot faster which is good for your tree health um, but you basically get the same amount of sap whether you use the the big tap or the small tap this is part of my management I got to cut out some of this kind of stuff that gets in the gets in the way maybe I'll just come right up with a saw and do that in a minute there's a little bit of sap in there to collect now it's fun there was so much snow here just like a week ago and so much more snow here two weeks ago and now there's now there's hardly any snow it's so easy to walk around no black flies yet no mosquitoes yet um, not really any songbirds yet either though the I think it'll be a couple weeks before most of those guys come back but I have heard American Robins song sparrows um, I was recently on Manitoulin Island and I saw and heard meadowlarks so there's a few spring birds I'll just check on the chili not browning yet uh, check my sap level it's a little bit high that's as tight as that gets though we got here oh, two and three quarter inches should come to a boil soon it's good to uh, just keep shoving firewood in there keep a hot fire going boil that sap make that syrup just have a little uh, hand saw up here that's all I need for those pesky pesky little balsams cut those out of the way you can do so much work with a little hand saw it's amazing like you can't cut a year's worth of firewood but um, for camp use trail clearing hunting yard trimming pretty much any old little hand saw will do I'll just burn those later. Try and cut those off as close to the ground level as I can so that they don't become a trip hazard. It says Corona. Just noticed.
these um, dry maple saplings. There is nothing that burns faster than these dry maple saplings. Um, they're not usually worth going out of your way to collect them, but sometimes I'll just bring them back and snap them over my knee and shove them in the stove. Maple trees, boiling maple sap, becoming maple syrup. Rinse these with a little bit of maple sap straight out of the bucket. Mushrooms, kidney beans, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, chili powder, beef broth. Beef and onions. A couple of mugs, a couple of spoons. Everything you need for a dinner for two. It's amazing that um, the front of the stove is like a okay temperature for cooking things if you're not in a rush and yet at the back you get enough heat going to get this all in a full rolling boil pretty cool how efficiently it moves heat a little bit further back to the uh, sap pans and there's a fair bit of heat here in the syrup because it's had a bit of a boil I gotta scoop some of that foam out of there without burning myself on the steam. Um, and I have to calibrate this thermometer so that I know when this syrup kind of at the end of the channel here is ready to pour off. Um, so I've got this cup here, I'm gonna bring this water to a boil. I'm gonna calibrate the needle to the zero because zero is water's boiling point. And then when it gets to the seven, then I'm gonna start to pour it off. Um, we brought a couple of big jugs here, and then I can bring it home. And I'll finish it on my electric stove at home. So um, hopefully by next year, I have a little more solid setup here other than the tarp frame. And I'll have a finishing boiler. So maybe a uh, propane fired um, stainless boiling pot and I'll be able to do uh, syrup on there you just have to be careful in here I find it's easy to take it off too thin or or last year when I was boiling with my brother uh, we let it go too far and then the sugar foam came up and over and um, made a big mess of everything just hit the big boil I gotta scoop some dirty foam out of here without burning myself I should have a longer handle on this Oh yeah, it's ever boiling now. That foam out. Just a, like a pasta strainer, kitchen spaghetti strainer. Um, you can make a real sticky mess though, so I just try and toss it all to the side, which is kind of the advantage of having a mostly outdoor setup, which I don't believe is legal for 
commercial sale, you have to have a covered, covered evaporator boiler system, kind of like an indoor setup. Mostly personal use right now, anyway. Yeah, there's a big well. And I think that's about as brown as as I need it to be. So let's start. Uh, let's start adding to this chili. Let's start adding beans. Yum. And some champignon. Oui, oui. Mmm, que c'est beau. Champignon. Some diced tomato. These have a bit of flavor. What are these? Italian seasonings. Yummy. And just some tomato sauce from the pizza section of the grocery store. Good. Some beef bouillon. I think the recipe called for one and a half cups of beef broth. Half a cup. One cup. One and a half cups. Something like that. And chili. Uh, mm. There we go. Chili seasoning. Get in there, chili seasoning. Oh okay, yeah, this is a two-handed operation. Hold on. There we go. Yes, this would be good with some corn also, which I didn't bring, but we'll just let that simmer away for a while. All right, I'm shaking the camera, shaking the spoon. Got a big boil going on. There it is. Look at all that steam. I love when there's just like steam pouring out the end of the tarp, both ends. Steaming like crazy. Should be able to do at least 50 liters an hour. Uh, so, uh, I need to make some space. Sorry, I'm totally distracted. There's a spider. Where are you, little spider? Where are you? Right there on the corner, you see that spider? Oh, losing the focus. Just right here, a little spider. He's probably living in there. Messed up his little house. I'm, uh, oops, what are we looking at here? Too deep, too deep. I got over three inches of sap on top of the, on top of the level. And it's because I was messing around with my, oh, I'm on Zoom still, eh? Messing around with my float box, um, and there's a problem. It's like a uh, there's a plunger in here, and it's a little bit sticky. There's a shaft, a sticky shaft, and when this is coming up and down, it's supposed to be adjusting the inflow of sap, and it's either getting stuck closed or getting stuck open. Um, I think what I have to do is take this home tonight and maybe soak it in vinegar. I think there's just like some old sugar residue built up on there or something. Okay, this is almost out of boil, that's good. Then we will be able to take out our thermometer, it just unscrews like so. So we will take out the thermometer and check the temperature in a minute. We just need it to come to a proper boil. Um, do I need to cover that stew? I don't think so. That chili? It should be good like that. Oh, look. Two chilies. Doubling up. Oh, look. There I am. So shiny. So 
I got these three big buckets full of sap. It needs to get filtered, but this thing's full. And my gravity tank is not full anymore because we've evaporated off quite a bit. You can see there's a fair bit of sap feeding, feeding through and getting evaporated. So let's fire this guy up. This is just a little 12 volt RV pump. I wired a switch on, a couple of alligator clips, and I got this little ATV battery. So put it in and follow the hose and out. So there's lots of can you see them there? Yeah, look at all that sap. So as the uh, level indicator starts to creep up, I'm just gonna make sure I shut it off because I wasn't paying attention last night and I overflowed a bit. So that little ATV battery, I could just carry it back and forth, but um, when I'm not using it, I just put it on this 100 watt panel and that pretty much keeps it topped up. But I did get sent a very cool product um, by EcoFlow, which I'll show in an upcoming upcoming video. It's a lithium ion battery. You can charge it with a car adapter, a wall plug, or a solar panel. And then you can plug a whole ton of things into it, like up to 13 different things. You can do AC plugs, you can do USB, you can do USB-C, you can do um, 12 volt like car plugs. So I could, in theory, I could run that um, 12 volt refrigerator cooler that I have. Uh, I could run it off of this lithium ion battery bank or I could um, set it all up so I can run my pump off of it, but also have all those other options. I could plug in um, like an AC LED shop light and just light the whole bush up. Uh, I could charge my phone and my camera while I'm up here. So um, anyway, I just unboxed it. I got to figure it all out. Uh, but that um, I think is going to be super handy. And I'm really hoping to get a lot of sap boiled tonight. Ooh, there's the sun. Um, it's almost six o'clock. I think I've been up here for two hours oh check out the chili well i had a little problem with my camera um which is that i ran out of storage space on my card then i went into the menu and i deleted some old video clips to make space and now i've got some kind of a writing error to the card anyway you're following along on my cell phone now um and where we're at is, if I flip this over here, we are at some, oh yeah, beautiful bubbling chili. And we're gonna set that aside and let that cool down. I got some supper company coming up very soon. So, you know, let that cool a bit. Um, this cup is almost out of boil, I think. I think I'm going to try and calibrate the thermometer in there. So all I do is put the thermometer into the boiling water and then adjust the needle so it reads at the zero. And that didn't work. I think this little cup's just too small and I suddenly had a flashback that maybe I've tried this before and it didn't work. Because I think you need to get two inches of the thermometer submerged in the water and this cup's just too small for that so hopefully uh, when my friend comes up she brings a saucepan we talked about having a saucepan here to get a proper temperature reading so um, fingers crossed right so it's been sitting for about 20 minutes which is how long you're supposed to let it sit we have a couple of camp mugs <gasps> scouty scouty and a couple of giant spoons, and then... Hey, it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. It's for the humans. Yeah, he's not going to dive in. It's 
He's going to know that it's just yeah. for us to dive in. Yeah, it does not smell like your food. Okay. It looks pretty good, eh? You just put it all in there and then let it heat up and it all cooks itself, like in a slow cooker? Yeah, I just got like um, four cans of Heinz pre-chili, dumped it all in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> there's a can of mushrooms, a pound of beef, there's dried onions, there's a can of, um diced tomatoes with Italian spice and then a can of pizza sauce and a package of chili mix. Nice, it smells really good. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I already told everybody, they already know what's in it. I think I might have even done it twice, but there it is. Better one. Mmm. First bite? Yeah, I'm gonna take a mushroom. Okay. Just a mushroom bite. Why did you just how hot is it? Yeah, it tastes hot. It's hot, it's good. Awesome. Yeah, sadly, because my other camera's out of commission, I can't really capture the light. So there's the stove, and there's some of the sky. It's getting dark, and we have to go, but we did boil off probably a few hundred liters of sap. I might be able to get syrup tomorrow, um, get this all fired back up. I think that'll be a separate video, so um, the chili was a big hit, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was the main thing. <laughs> chili and uh, big boil off, so uh, more, more maple bush videos coming up. Keep it real, YouTube.